So, guys, what is up? It's Teach here, coming at you again with another video over on Pal World. In this video, I am going to show you how to edit your server settings if you are renting a server and kind of change some of those things, or if you're hosting your own very similar concepts, and I'll kind of walk you through step by step. Now, I'm going to go and show you using my personal um, server provider, and that's G Portal. Um, but they have a nice GUI that I'm going to go ahead and use and show you how to actually get a hold of changing all your server settings. So essentially, if you are hosting on G Portal, you can see this is my actual area. You would just go to basic settings. Now, once you're in your basic settings, there's a whole bunch of things individually that you can change. You can also, if you're a little bit more advanced or you're playing on your a different uh, server provider or in your own individual hosted server, you can also go into file manager and all of the files that you would need are also inside of this area, just so you can see. And uh, you can kind of there's there's you can see the default pal settings. I and I there's a lot of individual settings that you can kind of change if you're a little bit more advanced with this. However, I don't like doing that. So I use the G portal, just the GUI is what it's called or graphic user interface. And then you would just click on your basic settings. Now, this pretty much applies for all server providers, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what the individual settings actually change, right? So here's some important things. Now, again, if you like G Portal and you'd like what I'm looking at right now, if you click below, you can get 10% off G Portal servers. And they are, I think it's like $4 a month for four slots. So definitely consider doing that. But anyways, yeah, let's get started. So you can see here's my basic settings, the server name, you can name it whatever you want. You can change the description to be whatever you want. You can change your admin password, server password, max players, and you can enable Archon. What enabling Archon does is when they do allow us to have the cheat option, it'll allow you to control things from the actual uh, GUI or enter in commands. Now, once we get into the extended settings, right, this is an important one. So this is where the actual settings of the game change. Now, death penalty, this one's pretty simple. No lost means you lose nothing. Lost items without equipment, the lost items and equipment, the lost all items, equipment and pals. I like to leave this on no lost because that just makes it more fun for me because if I lose for some stupid reason, I don't have to worry about it. Now, what, what am I going to talk about next? Multiplayer, you want to have that checked because that's going to allow you to have multiple multiple people on the server is PVP. It's not really something that works yet, but in a future update, it's their plan to add this. That's why it's an option. Um, you can pick up other guild death penalty drops. Yes, you want to pick that up because then you can pick up your tribe mate stuff. Enable non login penalty. I turn this off because I do not like having penalties for not logging on in case something happens or I got to go take care of something, right? Um, exist after player after logout. I like this because it keeps the world rendered in, which helps a lot when you're trying to keep pals working. Uh, enabling fast travel. Yes, enable that because that's going to allow you to fast travel around the map. Is start location select by map? Yes, enable that because it's gonna allow you to spawn into different zones on your map itself. Enable defense other guild players? Yes, want that. Enable player to player damage? Again, that's more of a PVP thing, but you can enable that and it's gonna basically enabling friendly fire so you can do damage to your uh, pals or your or guild mates if you wanna call them that. Now. Enable invader enemy. You can turn off invaders in Pal World. I, I do not encourage you to do that, though, because if you if you turn off invaders in Pal World, it's going to cause some problems just because some of the parts of the game are meant on getting those resources that they provide. And some tames or pals can really only be gotten easily from those invasions. But if you're not comfortable with it, you can turn that off. This is the command that I have no idea what it means. It's unknown knockout. Now, I, I do not know what it does. I usually leave it off because it's a, if it's something that I don't know what it does, I turn it off. That's my rule of thumb. Aim assist on keypad, aim assist on keyboard, um, and then reset guild no online players. I leave these two unchecked. You can turn this one off too. This is more of just for like your Xbox players that want the uh, aim assist turned off. Now these are your individual rates, right? I'll kind of walk through these one by one and show you what you can change, uh, but that's kind of what I'm talking about. So co-op player max number, you can make this as high as you want, but uh, basically it just allows you to bring more people into boss battles. So if you've got a big server, just make it like 10 or something like that. It doesn't actually change too much. It just enables you to have more cooperative uh, people. So day, night, you can actually increase the day speed or night speed if you want to do it just by actually uh, changing those numbers on a slider scale. You can go up in order to actually increase the speed and then down to decrease the speed. Now, experience rate, this one is the rate in which you gain experience. I have this at 2.5 because it seems a little more balanced than one. One seems to take forever. 2.5 gives you a little bit of a bonus XP and it seems to make a major difference. 
I'll capture it. I double this because sometimes it's really frustrating, especially in solo player or if you're just playing alone. Wasting that number of pal spheres, this the higher numbers will mean that it's easier to catch pals and the lower numbers will make it harder to catch pals. Spawn rate higher than one can be a little bit dangerous because it's going to be more uh, taxing on your computer or your server. So I usually stick at about 1.3 just to give me a few extra pals. I'll damage attack and defense. I would leave these at one, but you can increase these to actually increase the damage and defense that is done. You can increase these just a little bit for damage attack rate and defense rate because I like to be a little bit tankier and do a little more damage to feel like I'm more immersed in the game. I also tend to drop my stomach and stamina decrease rate um, because I will put those at 0.8 to decrease the amount of food that I need to eat and then the stamina as well. So it feels a little bit more fun if you're not playing official. Then I usually double my HP regeneration rate just because it's really frustrating to sit there and wait and have to eat a ton of food when it's just not really a necessary mechanic. Um, you can see this when I don't sleep very often. You can increase that in order when you sleep to actually gain more health back. And then pal stomach decrease and stamina decrease. You can drop these in order to actually make them eat less often and have a lower uh, rate in which they waste stamina. Now, HP rate, you can see you can increase that if you really wanted to. I could set that to two, but I'm not going to. Um, pal auto HP regenerate and sleep. Same thing as the thing above. Build object damage rate. So if you have an object, it's going to cause damage at a X rate. So if you want to do increased damage, you would put that at something like two. Build object deterioration damage rate. Again, I wouldn't worry about that. It's a little bit more of a complex command. Collection drop rate. What that means is I would put this at a little higher number if you want to gather more materials from the actual game itself. It can be useful in order to have something like this because it's going to increase your ability to get resources, right? And we like that. Um, collection object HP rate. This means that you'll get more overall stuff out of it because it's got a higher hit points. So if it has more hit points, you can gather more stuff. So these in combination, 2 and 1.5 seems to be a nice little number. Now, collection object spawn speed rate. This is up to you. It just basically means that um, it'll respawn at a certain rate. You can put it at 0.5 to have it respawn uh, slower, I think. And then 2 is going to make it uh, respawn faster. Enemy drop item rate, I have that raised just because I like to have more things. Like if you kill an individual tame, you can get increased resources from that. And that that's what that does. So like more overall resources. If you really wanted to, you could make something crazy like 10 be your number out of this. So you have to go get less stuff often. But that's up to you, in all honesty. Drop alive max hours. That's just if you drop something, how long it stays up. Pal egg default hatching time. The lower this is, the quicker your pals will hatch. So having that at something at like 1 or 0.1 or 0.5 or whatever you want to do will increase it greatly. The lower numbers mean that's going to hatch way faster. Work speed rate will increase the rate at which your creatures actually do their speed. So higher numbers will make them work faster. Lower numbers will make them work slower. And then these last few haven't really made a big difference yet, but you can actually change the number of base camp workers. Max number 25. It doesn't actually change anything unless you until they activate that in the game. I don't know why they have it. And then guild player max number is the number of people you can have in your tribe. So once you are done with all that, you can click save. And then if you are actively connected to the game itself, it will end up kicking you out. Just be aware of that. And then you can also return to title. And then once you get kicked out, you can just rejoin and that will be all of your settings. Now, again, if you click in that link below on this, you'll get 10% off G portal servers, and that'll show you the exact company that I use in order to host my pal world server, the one I'm playing on right now. And then it's like $4 a month for four people. Or if you got a bigger server and you got like 30, it's basically like ish a dollar ish a slot a month. So that 10% off can be useful, especially if you're maybe a, you want to run your own server cluster. Um, definitely consider that because I know in the future they plan on allowing people to cross over servers. So. Hopefully this video helped you out, and if you don't mind, smack that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. Alright, teach. Out.